what you talking about, what it is. I'm about to give you six. That's right. Six reasons blacks may pull that lever for Donnie Trey at about 30%. What? And reason number one, reason number one is the black woman. Let's hear from her. This is wrong, right? You It's an attack yes. on the black community by the Democratic Party. As black people who have been hurt continuously by the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else. It is time for us as black people yeah. to stop voting party. It is time for yeah. us to stop voting color. Yes. It is time for us to start voting our self-interest. Yes. This is what these kids need for this community. We got violence. We got poverty. We already keep scrap. Why do we always got to be at the bottom of the barrel? I'm standing here tonight with buyer's remorse. I feel like a fool right now. Yes. Reason number one. Reason number one is the chocolate woman. She is pissed off because her and I have an older boomer mom. Their benefits may get cut off. It would cost me a lot of money, me and my brother, if it wasn't for Medicaid D and all these things that she's earned. That was a deal. You said she was going to get it. She wants it. Reason number two, ladies and gentlemen, is polling numbers. The numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. Take a listen. And once again, who's going to be championing this conversation? You guessed it. The chocolate woman. The Fox polling for 2020 and 2020. It shows his popularity among these voters plummeting, while Donald Trump has seen a substantial boost. Here to discuss further, it's co-host of Revolutionary Blackout Network and co-host and host of the Savvy Says podcast, Sabrina Salvati. Welcome, Sabrina. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me on. Yeah, thanks for joining us. So, uh, do you buy, you know, the administration's claims that everybody, including everybody in the black community, should just be all fine and dandy with how things have turned out? I do not. Um, I think that I have heard more from. Uh, black people that they're not willing to just cave over and vote for the Democratic Party this time around. I think that poll is very telling. This is the first time, at least since I've been eligible to vote, where I've seen 20 support, 20 percent support from African-Americans for a Republican presidential candidate. So Donald Trump's support among African-Americans has actually increased compared to where it was in 2020. And I think the Democratic Party should be very concerned about this. I think this idea that uh, Donald Trump is 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 scary. And I'm, I'm just not convinced that that message about Donald Trump is going to work with black voters this time around in 2024 the way that it did in 2020. And I say this because uh, during 2020, that was a chance when we were like, well, we could have a Biden presidency and it could be different compared to how it was with Donald Trump. Well, now we've had both. We've had a Biden presidency and we've had a Trump presidency. And a lot of African-American voters feel that economically their, ni their life is not improved and it's actually become worse under Joe Biden presidency. So I think that the Democratic Party should be very concerned because they cannot win without African-American uh, support. And this could turn the page, I think, in reference to we look at electoral politics and where people stand, uh, African-Americans stand in reference to the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. So we could see a change here. Say it, sister. Say it, sister. That is a woman that studies the left. But what the hell, boy? Reason number two, numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. And what she said is true. Reason number three. Reason number three is Charlemagne the God telling you about border crossing. I have the privilege, man, of, uh, you know, doing morning radio and speaking to, you know, working class people every single day. I have the privilege of, you know, being involved in my community from, you know, New York to New Jersey to South Carolina, where I get to look people in the eyes and have, you know, real conversations, you know, with them. And, you know, people are really concerned about this issue. Like, I've, I've, I honestly have never spoken to as many people who are concerned about the migrant issue as I have, you know, o over the past year. And I mean, I've heard everything from, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the gang MS-13, you know, uh, overrunning neighborhoods. I've heard, um, you know, what we saw just happened in New York City where the migrants 
they took 2,000 migrants and, and, and put them in the school and made the school stay home, made the, the students stay home and, 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 and uh, you know, do school via, via, via Zoom. And that was a big issue. Like, Let's break that up for the algorithm. I just told you, like even in my home city, right now I'm on the outskirts of Charlotte. I do my business there. I don't recognize it anymore. Most people that's coming over, they don't speak English. And it's going to be a territory fight sooner or later. Yolanda, I'll be checking right after this. I have several emails. Sorry. That said, that said, let's go back and finish what Charlemagne, oh God, has to say about his travels. And he's right about South Carolina. My mother go to church in South Carolina. They're really talking about this migrant issue. They're afraid. A lot of elderly, especially in the chocolate community, they're living alone, still being independent. And guess what? It's too easy to kick in their dough, waving the fofo, and taking everything they got. Let's pay attention. I mean, people were calling the radio station. That was just this week, you know, really, really, really complaining about that. So I've never seen, you know, working class people who I interact with every day until this past year really, really, really express their frustration for the migrants. And it's not even just the people like you see politicians who once, you know, championed having the migrants in the city like the mayor, Eric Adams of New York. Now they're like, yo, hold up. This is this is too much. You know, we've heard Vice President Kamala Harris say, hey, don't come. Like we've 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 seen that. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a real, 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 you know, uh, Real big issue. And I quote, a real, 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 real big issue. Reason number three. Reason number three is the migrant issue that is overwhelming African-American, predominantly African-American neighborhoods. And as Donnie J told us, those are not the best people. I've heard chocolate sisters online and TikTok say, listen, where are them military aged men? What are they running from? Oh, my God. Reason number four on our list, ladies and gentlemen, is the anomaly. Ooh. Reason number four is the minister, Louis Farrakhan, and the game he gives us right now. Mr. Trump is an anomaly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's someone that doesn't fit the norm. You expected a man to be like the other presidents. You wanted him to be more presidential. He's so transparent. You wanted him to put on a suit and act dignified. Like the thieves and robbers that dress in suits and tell lies. You wanted him to be like that. He's telling lies, all right. And you're angry because he's your reflection. He's an anomaly. You can't make him what you desire him to be so that you can say, oh, that's my president. He wasn't made that way. Reason number four. Reason number four, he is an anomaly. Just like Neo. You thought Neo was the one. It is Donald John Trump. He is an anomaly. Can't control him. And that is coming from the Honorable Lewis, Minister Lewis Farrakhan. So I've never seen him stand up and just champion anybody from the vanilla delegation. What he's doing? Reason number five, ladies and gentlemen, this is Van Jones that was in the Obama or White House. As you can see, he represents the Negro delegation. Let's hear this quick sound bite from said homie, Van Jones. Yeah, it's just hard to know. I mean, and, you know, uh, facts and feelings are very different. People keep telling me, well, yeah, you got, you know, great uh, employment numbers in the black community and aren't you happy? I'm like, yeah, but they're crappy jobs. Uh, like, how do people feel uh, is going to be, be a lot different than what the numbers are. Ladies and gentlemen, didn't need much there. Didn't need much there. Number five, crappy jobs. Now you fucked up. Hey, we've created all these jobs. Crappy jobs. 
And I ask you this, chocolate delegation, how many times you seen somebody look like you that's in that over office? See this guy? Number one bullshit guy. BLM, where you at? Ain't invited you nothing. You got nothing. Nothing from nothing, Lee, nothing. Reason number six is called receipts. Listen to the receipts. This president deserves the support of the black community because he's earned it. There is a silent majority of us that see you, see what you're doing, see what you did for HBCU schools. That was actually the deal for us. I, I wager to say that there is no American president since Lincoln that has had the impact for black America that President Trump has had. Joe Biden supported the crime bill in 94. He has imprisoned black America, basically. Trump supported the NAACP and black youth like myself in 87. He's a businessman. He's bringing businesses back into America. Bringing jobs back to America. Bringing the truth back, and he's stopping needless wars. My day is going to be, like, amazing. I'm never going to forget this day. This day is historic. In 2016, I made you a solemn pledge. I would be your greatest champion. In the first three years, we achieved the lowest black unemployment rate in history. We achieved the largest job gains for African Americans on record. Poverty rate for African Americans reached the lowest level ever recorded. I did more for the black community in 47 months than Joe Biden did in 47 years. We cannot deny that that man has done everything that he has set out to do in record-breaking time. Can we say three years? Can we say three years? We will create three million new jobs for the black community. Open 500,000 new black-owned businesses. Bring even greater fairness to the justice system. We did criminal justice reform. I want to thank President Donald John Trump. Create a ladder of opportunity for African-American children by delivering school choice to every parent in America. Together, we made unbelievable progress and achieved once unimaginable success. And with your support, your vote, and your voice, the best is yet to come. You can expect us to come out in droves in your support. For absolute certainty. That's a certainty. Who was you talking about, Walt Diddy? I just gave you six. Six reasons why. 30% or more may just pull the level for Donnie J here in 2024. What say you? Like, share, subscribe, hit the thumbs down button. It does not matter. You argue with facts. Argue with facts. And then guess what? Facts does not need validation. Bad.